But of course, Akiko, the big story of the morning dropped at 8.30 in the morning. The consumer price index showing prices increasing by 8.3% on a year-over-year basis. If you strip out those more volatile components of pricing like food and energy, it actually clocked in somewhere uh, just above 6%. Now, people who are looking at this on a year-over-year basis might be saying, well, that is slower than the uh, 8.5% figure that we had seen in the month of March, so maybe that's good. But look, either way you cut it or slice it, 8% year-over-year inflation, people are feeling this. And um, gasoline prices went down between March and April, but you know, you look at eggs, for example, up 10% on a year-over-year basis. These are the types of things, even if you strip them out from core, that Americans are feeling. Yeah, and we're going to be talking about the grocery prices in just a bit. But let's kind of break down some of the numbers here in terms of what we got from the report today. The biggest increase that's increases we saw right there, Brian mentioned the eggs. But let's also talk about tra- transportation, airlines. Airline fares jumped 18.6% oh, in April. And I know, you know, you and I both, I mean, I'm imagining when you've been searching for those summer fares, it, Brutal. We, it's already a, a tough few months in those peak summer months. And now we've been seeing that as well. I mean, I am curious to see when you look at where the declines were, the energy index overall down 2.7% in April. That's after rising 11% in March. So is that potentially a sign that things are starting to peak? And and, and obviously, we don't want to make too much of one month's report. But so much of these price increases we've seen have come from the energy side. It has come from the energy side, but at the end of the day, let's say, for example, you are a company that in the beginning of this year experienced the higher energy prices. You've passed on those prices to your consumers. If consumers are buying them, you're not going to then suddenly drop the price just because your energy input has gone down. You know that you can pass on those price increases, so you're going to continue to charge at those higher rates. So I think that when we talk about inflation, when you take a look at the core number, what was interesting was that it actually clocked in at 0.6% on a month-over-month basis. That was an upside surprise in addition to the headline numbers that we had seen. So even the core CPI, when you strip out energy like you were mentioning, is still coming in very hot. So even though people might be pulling some strings from this report and saying, Well, it's possible, possible that maybe we saw a peak in inflation in March. It's kind of the jury's still out on whether or not a lot of these things are going to continue to fade because at the end of it, it's not just food and energy that's going up. Well, it's interesting you mentioned that you think, you know, even those who have passed through the cost from energy will keep those prices there because one of the things we've been talking about for some time is, you know, what is that that tipping point for consumers where they start to say, well, this is just too high. I mean, I would argue in some cases, groceries, which we're going to talk about, in some areas, that's already started to happen. Yeah, and one thing, too, that's kind of worth watching over the medium term is owner-equivalent rent, right? So we actually saw that tick up pretty remarkably uh, to 0.5% of a month-over-month increase. That doesn't sound like a lot, but when you consider that rent and mortgage payments are such a substantial part of an average household's expenditures, what is that going to do over the long term? Now, this is something, the tick up that we've seen in owner equivalents mm-hmm. rent, at least in the CPI, is a trend that we actually have not started to see until the spring of this year. So we know that the home price appreciation, which rapidly happened over the course of last year, that probably spells out further increases in that rent component of this inflation. What does that do in the future? Does that crowd out the ability to spend? Actually, that could be a counter cyclical component that if people are spending more on rent, that's actually going to force them to spend less on other types of goods. That could be a very interesting dynamic to watch for in the future inflation reports. Well, and if you think about rents going up, housing prices also going up, you're kind of stuck, right, in the middle there, especially with the rates going up, bringing that monthly mortgage up, Mm -hmm. too. Um, New vehicles up 1.1%. For those that can find one. For those that can find one. Used cars came (laughs) down, but... Yeah. Well, you still get these. I mean, a lot of that is also markups, right? You know, it's the only RAV4 on the lot, so we're going to charge you another 12K for that. But uh, let's leave that for right there for that.